What's up guys? We are back with another Thundercats Ultimates review. It is not Wave 2. We aren't quite there yet, but we've got something to sort of hold us over for a bit. We've got the Big Bad Toy Store exclusive Evil Glow Mumra. So this guy was kind of a surprise, right? We didn't know that he was coming until he was here. And I'm really, really excited to take a look at this one because Mumra is a really solid figure and I'm a sucker for glow in the dark variants. We've got him here in the standard style box for the line in terms of shape anyway, but it's done up in a red foil motif, which I mean, it looks pretty snazzy on its own. So you've got the double serpent logo there with uh, the Thundercats logo on the front and then the back has got that big Thundercats logo. Super shiny, super metallic, looks fantastic. And then we've got, of course, the figure there inside the slipcover, Mumra and all of his glowing glory. The Thundercats logo down there and Mumra's nameplate on the box actually glows in the dark as well. And then on the back, you've got a shot of that huge vintage style spread, which I just love that artwork. It's a very nostalgic piece for me. And then you've got a little bit of a bio down there at the bottom. So great presentation as usual, but I really dig this sort of special foil variant that they went with it. It makes him look a little bit more special. So let's do it. Let's pull him out and take a look. And here we go out of the package, our Evil Glow Mumra Ultimates figure from Super 7. Something that while still seems like a bit of a surprise is no less exciting to take a look at because well, it's Thundercats, and I'm just going to eat it all up no matter what it is. But this thing is pretty cool, honestly. I was really, really happy with everything Super 7 did with the first, the regular Ultimates figure, because it expanded upon an already pretty solid figure. And this guy is more of the same in many ways, just with a different color palette in some respects, which we'll talk about. And then, of course, the glow-in-the-dark aspect. And while this isn't necessarily a thing for Mumra, it's not like we had a, a real glowing Mumra thing within the show, I like it. It works well, and it just gives off kind of an evil vibe. So it, it makes more sense than if they had done, I don't know, say a glow-in-the-dark jackal man or a, or a panthro or a lion -o even. So let's get started, see what this guy can do, see how he moves around. So for the uninitiated, you know, he is exactly the same as the other Mumras that we've gotten. Granted, when he's like this, right out of the box, you really can't do a lot with him. So he does come with an extra cape, a soft goods cape, that will allow him to be mobile. Right now, you know, he's really just supposed to be sort of a, a stoic mummy. But I'm going to take it off of him, and we will uh, we will talk about the figure and what he does. So we'll, we'll pop the head back on there, and then we will start moving this guy around. So he is, for all intents and purposes, uh, the same figure that we've gotten before, just glow in the dark. And I will say, to start off with, that... He doesn't feel gummy. He doesn't feel much different from a regular figure. The The plastic all very much seems to be really sturdy, rigid, but not in a negative way, if that makes any sense. And overall, just normal, if that makes any sense. It just feels like a normal figure, not necessarily like a glow-in-the-dark figure. So you've got a head that can look up. He can look down pretty good. You've got tilt side to side for a little attitude and then a full rotation, of course. You know, again, a lot of this is impeded by the rubber cape, so that's why I took it off of him. You've got arms that go out at the shoulders. You do have the wraps on the back. They don't really get in the way. You know, you, you get about as far as you can go, and they'll go with you. They do impede him when he goes forward a little bit because they're going to they're gonna tighten up. So if you get both of them going, you'll get him about all the way, but he does sort of start to tug on himself at that point. You've got single rotating elbows, and then you've got hinges and rotation at the wrist. We do have a waist twist. Legs go out, but of course he does have a rubbery, well, it's almost a skirt, but it's the wraps. So his legs go out about that far. You, can, you know, if you kind of chance it, he'll go a little further. They kick forward, but only so far. They kick backwards a good bit, and then there is no thigh cut up there. Uh, there is nothing to twist on these legs. You've got a single rotating knee, however, and then you've got rockers, and you've got hinges down at those ankles. So he is pretty normal for the line. He is a little bit limited in his overall movement just because of, well, he's very much covered like a mummy, but he's also not really a dynamic figure either. So for all intents and purposes, I've never had a problem with how this guy is built and constructed. He moves well enough for what he's supposed to be. Now, as far as the overall look and feel, well, if you've got the first figure, or, well, even the Mattel figure, you really know what to expect here. And, I mean, really, that's a solid figure. I really like this guy. I think he looks really good in terms of being a very cartoon-looking Mumra. And this particular version does have some changes. It's kind of interesting because the 
The Ultimate's Mumra, of course, has a color palette change in a number of ways. The skin tone is different from the Mattel version, the cloak is different, and this guy is even more different. He's not the same as either figure. Of course, he's done up in translucent plastic this time around, will glow in the dark translucent plastic, so that's a color palette change on its own. But the cape is an entirely different color. Both the soft goods cape that we'll talk about here shortly and the rubbery cape are not as dark as the, or well, they're a different shade of dark red as the Mattel version, and they are quite different from the bright red that we got with the Ultimus version. So you do have, I guess, some mix and match potential if you want to be real, I don't know, choosy about your cloak when it comes to which figure you use. I do think that this particular color looks really good, though. I mean, I don't really have a preference. I do I do tend to lean towards the, the Ultimates version, I suppose, but I'm happy with this one being a little bit different as well. I really think where this figure excels, though, is just the overall instance of translucent glow-in-the-dark plastic because, like I mentioned, not only does it feel like a normal figure, it doesn't really have that gummy feeling that you get with a lot of glow-in-the-dark stuff. It translates this figure really nicely just because it plays up the mummy aesthetic and then, of course, it has a lot of room to utilize all this wash that's all over him. Granted, a lot of the figure is covered when he's, when he's cloaked like this, but you get to see all of the different line patternings with this black wash that's applied over top of him, and it doesn't really impact the glow feature either. The face is really well done, just like all the other figures. The one thing that I should mention, though, is that there is a deco change between what we saw with the proto or promo pics and what we actually got. The eyes are white in the promo pictures, but they're red here, and they do not glow. They react to black lights, and they really they sort of shine up a little bit, but they don't actually glow in the dark. I'm not sure what the, the change was there. I do like the fact that he has the red eyes personally, and it looks really cool under a black light, but granted, a change is a change. All that said and done, it's a pretty solid figure like this, but we're all here for one thing. We're all here for that glow. And he really does glow really, really well. Again, the entire figure is done up in translucent glow-in-the-dark plastic. And you can see, I mean, he just lights up when you've got him uh, charged up for a little bit. Hit him with a black light, set him out in the sun, whatever you're going to do. He holds a charge just as well as the Super 7 Ultimate's glow-in-the-dark Toxie, Ultimate's glow-in-the-dark Baxter Stockman. Uh, Super 7 is doing a really good job when it comes to making figures glow. And like I mentioned, when it comes to the eyes, uh, if you want to hit him with black light, you can see the eyes will sort of react a little bit as well, and they sort of... Uh, turn pinkish orange almost in many ways. And then, of course, the figure itself just lights up really, really well when you hit him with black light. And then, of course, a black light is going to charge him up really nicely. So he's got a really brilliant glow. I mean, this thing will glow under black light even in sunlight, really. But there you've got him uh, after being exposed. So he looks really good. He holds a charge really well. Of course, a lot of the figure is covered when you've got him in this wrap. But if you use the other cape, then you'll get a lot more of that glow-in-the-dark plastic exposed, but I'm very, very happy with what they did here. And then, of course, like I mentioned, here is a quick comparison as far as your standard configuration, Mumra, when it comes to our Mattel figure on the left, our glow-in-the-dark in the middle, and the Ultimate Super 7 figure on the right. So there's a lot to compare, but at the same time, like many instances when I do this, there's really not a lot to compare, because the one big difference here is the cloak color. So the Super 7 figure, the first one, the Ultimates, took it in a really different direction by making it very bright, whereas this one goes back towards the darker side, but it's almost like a burgundy color. It's not exactly a deep red like the Mattel version is, it's just different on its own. So this is what I was talking about, where if you want to be really choosy with the color of cloak you go with, you now have three options if you have all of them. Otherwise, they are, of course, exactly the same figure, save for the fact that there is a color palette swap on the Ultimates figure, and then of course we're talking glow-in-the-dark plastic on the new guy. Now as far as accessories goes, this version of Mumra, like the Ultimates figure, comes pretty well stacked, and the first couple of things we've got to talk about are ways that you can change him up. So you've got the alternate head sculpt here that has the open mouth, so you can get him kind of screaming his mummy head off there, and then you've got your uh, soft goods wired cape so you can pose it up and this has been my cape of choice when it comes to the ultimates figure is to use the wired version so i use the the more closed rubber cape on the mattel version 
the wired cape on the Super 7 version because you can make him, you know, kind of do his mid-transformation where the cape is billowing behind him. And I think it looks fantastic. This is, of course, a different color than the, the Ultimates one. It very much matches the rubber cape that we're getting with this figure. So it's a more dark burgundy style of color. So it's another instance of them kind of being uh, a little bit different with this figure by giving him something that is unique to this release, which I do kind of like while it's still being a little bit odd. So you've got all the same stuff to change him up here uh, that we saw with the Ultimates release. And I, I can't stress enough how much this cape really changes this figure. Not only does it allow you to be more dynamic with him, it also, of course, exposes a lot more of this glow-in-the-dark plastic. So you can make much more of him seen when it comes to exposing him to the light and that's just getting him to be a little bit more brilliant in your display. Now, as far as the rest of the stuff he comes with, you do have some extra hands to start with. So he's got these kind of like style pose, open palm hands, which is kind of essentially for this kind of pose. It works really well. You've got a set of gripping hands here. So you've got those. We have got a book of omens. Is it the real one? Is it the fake one? Only time will tell. This is glow in the dark. All the accessories are glow-in-the-dark, I should say. We've got our urn, which is done up in glow-in-the-dark plastic with white and black accents. You've got the hilt to the Sword of Plundar. We've got the still very obscure Rosencrantz medallion. This is one of those weird accessories I never expected anybody to want to make in toy form. And then we've got my favorite accessory with this figure still, uh, through the Mattel version to the Ultimates version and this one. We've got our now glow-in-the-dark LJN style staff. So of course this is what the vintage toy came with. It is one of my favorite accessories. I love this thing so much. They did a great job with the sculpt, the overall design, the paint, and then of course this guy glows just like the rest of it. So you've got various ways to change the figure up and you've got a smattering of glow in the dark, uh, glow in the dark accessories. There's really not much more you can ask for. So yeah, it's a Thundercats figure. I'm pretty much on board to begin with, but this is a really solid figure. I like Mumra to begin with as a figure. I liked him from Mattel. I liked him better from Super 7 because he comes with all this rather esoteric stuff. And this guy is more of the same, just done up in glow-in-the-dark plastic. And I'm a sucker for glow-in-the-dark plastic. It's, it's a really fun way to get a new Thundercat figure out there. And it's kind of bridging the gap between Wave 1 and the wait for Wave 2. I think Super 7 did a really solid job with the glow-in-the-dark on this figure. He is, again, incredibly bright and vibrant, and he soaks up light really well and shines incredibly brightly. Very happy with the overall presentation. I even love the box. The box is my favorite of the Ultimate Thundercat boxes so far. Something about this red foil design is really working for me in comparison to the black that we get with the regular figures. So all around a really solid exclusive that was also incredibly easy to get. So that's going to do it for this look at the Big Bad Toy Store exclusive Super 7 Ultimate Evil Glow Mumra. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.